study. I'm Pastor Wright, and we welcome all our Facebook family and friends. Amen. Praise Amen. God. And we enjoy coming to you every Wednesday with a word from the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's going to encourage victorious living in Jesus. Now, just to make an announcement before we get started, and uh, I'm going to try to make the same announcement at the end, if I remember. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't forget about 
the next uh, upcoming in-person church service. That will be Sunday, October 24th. Sunday, October 24th at 12 o'clock noon. Once again, I say that our next in-person church service will be Sunday, October 24th at 12 o'clock noon. And we will once again be at the Wahhabi Building off of I-55 South. Again, we'll be at the Wahhabi Building at 4123 I-55 South, and that is in the heart of Jackson, Mississippi. Amen. Don't forget, we will be social distancing. Amen. We will be wearing our face masks, all that. Don't forget, you're talking to Pastor Wright. I still believe in following the CDC guidelines. I don't care who's going to follow them. I'm following them. Amen. And if I'm going to follow them, we're going to do it at our church. Amen. Until the Lord say otherwise. So don't forget, amen, we will be uh, observing, amen, praise God. Also, I believe it's the second Sunday, we will be observing Holy Communion as well this coming Sunday. Amen. Man, where has this year gone? It's gone by so fast. Amen. So don't forget about this coming Sunday. We will be observing Holy Communion. Make sure that you get your sacraments, your little juice, and your little cracker. Amen. Praise God. And, uh, you know, whatever you have there is fine, liquid. And get your little piece of cracker, and we will partake of Holy Communion. Amen. Praise God. So don't forget, amen, this, this coming Sunday, amen, at 10 o'clock, Facebook Live. But don't forget, once again, about our upcoming in-person church service on Sunday, October 24th. And that's at 12 o'clock noon in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, how many of you are ready to get into the Word of God? It's Wednesday night Bible study, so we don't have a lot of preliminaries. We get right into the Word of God. Amen. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you, Father, and we just thank you for your Word. For your Word is a lamp unto our feet, light unto our pathway. We thank you that your Word will illuminate our way. And Father, we just thank you for the great teacher among us, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us into all truth. And Lord, we just thank you that I'll not miss to the right nor to the left, but I'll follow your perfect will concerning this subject of keys to overcoming sin. And Father, we just thank you right now. Uh, we just thank you for utterance unto the Holy Ghost. Thank you that my tongue is like that of a ready writer, ready to write upon the heart of your people, your uncompromised, holy, and infallible word. And Lord, we shall be careful to give you all of the glory, honor, and praise for what shall be revealed through your holy written word or through gifts of the Spirit, in Jesus' name, all that agree with this prayer, shout it, amen, amen, praise God. Turn with me to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 6, amen, we want to encourage you to call other people as well, let them know that we're on the air, amen, don't just hog it for yourself, y'all getting fed the good word of God, come on now, I mean y'all getting fed the word of God, how I many of you have been blessed? Well, you need to make sure you call someone else as well and let them know that we are on Facebook Live. So you go ahead now and do that. Amen. While you're at it, make sure you get your Bible, ink, pen, and pencil so we can take good notes in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, Romans chapter 6. We're still on the subject of keys to overcoming sin. Amen. Praise God. Let's read Romans chapter 6. And verse 22, one of our text scriptures said, But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end of everlasting life. Then verse 23, a very well-known passage of scripture says, For the wages, or the price tag, of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, we also read that from several other translations. It says here, Romans 6, 22 says, but now you have been set free from sin and are slaves to God. Your gain is a life fully dedicated to him and the result is eternal life. And then verse 23 says, for sin pays its wages death. But God's gift is eternal life in union with Christ Jesus our Lord. Another translation put it this way. 
But now, as God's loving servants, you live in joyous freedom from the power of sin. So consider the benefits that you now enjoy. You are brought deeper into the meaning of true holiness. For sin's wages is death. But God's lavish gift, but God's lavish gift is eternal life found in union with our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. Amen. Praise God. Now turn with me to John's Gospel, chapter 8. John's Gospel, chapter 8. These are our text scriptures. These are the scriptures in which we built our message on. Amen. Our sermon on. John's Gospel, chapter 8. And let's pick up there at verse 36. We're talking about keys to overcoming sin. Amen. Praise God. And I like that one translation that said, but now you have been set free from sin and now you are slaves to God. I like that. Your gain is a life fully dedicated to him and the result is eternal life. We're talking about keys to overcoming sin. But just for some of you, I've always been instructed, whatever you teach them is what people shall become. You know, faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17, and hearing by the word of God. So our message is not mainly on the subject of sin, even though every now and then you need to preach along these lines. You know, we live in a day now where people don't teach on the subject of sin at all. Now, now that not that I'm teaching on the subject of sin, we're going to be talking about how to walk free from sin. Amen. So we're not talking about... You know, like I heard one preacher said years ago when I was in a Pentecostal church, man, the title of his message was Stop. S-T-O-P. Stop. And he had the one scripture, and that was for the wages of sin is death. And he got to preaching hard. Stop, stop your backbiting. Stop, stop your fornicating. Stop, stop this. Stop, stop that. Stop, stop. It's like, wow. You got to remember, whatever you continue to preach is what people shall become. So I, I think it's very important. I, I, honestly, I think we need to minor on talking about sin. I think we need to minor on that, but major on what can we do for God. Uh, let's major on our freedom in Christ and what can we do for the Lord? What can replace all that sin? And, and, and that's what we're talking about. We're majoring on what can we do for Christ. We are majoring on how we can walk free from sin. Amen? Not just sin, 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 sin. Stop. God's got a hammer. He's going to kill you. He will destroy you sinners, sinners in the hands of an angry God. Come on, guys. Now, whatever you continue to preach is what people shall become. Yes. Brother Hagin said that a long time ago. He said, you got to be so careful just continuing to preach along sin. Because he, he said, people already know how to sin. So why are you preaching so hard on sin? People already know what it's all about. You need to preach about righteousness. That's yeah. yeah. And I won't forget that, Brother Eggers, that people will become what you continue to preach. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just, just so I just thought I'd throw that out there. That's free of charge. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. So this message ain't about just sin, even though you have to bring it up, which is very important, mm -hmm. very important. But we're going to major on what can we do for Christ. Yeah. Come on now. We're going to major on walking in victory, walking free from sin. Amen. Yeah. All right. John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 36. Notice the words of Jesus. He said, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be what? Free indeed. Yeah. Another translation put it this way. So if the Son sets you free from sin, then become a son and be unquestionably free. Then become a son and be what? Unquestionably free. Try saying that word three times real fast. Amen. Yep, so he said, so if the son sets you free from sin, then become a son and be unquestionably free. Be free. Amen. Another translation put it this way. So if the son sets you free, you are free through and through. Wow. You are free how? You're free through and through. 
Now turn to me, turn to one more text scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And this is what we built our message on, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. Again, we're talking about keys to overcoming sin. These are text scriptures, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us. He hath made who? Jesus, he became sin for us who knew no sin. Remember, Jesus was sinless. Come on. He was the only man without sin. He was sinless. But he was made to be sin for who? For you and I. For you and I. Because we had a hell to gain and a heaven to shun. But then came Jesus. He became sin for us who knew no sin. That we, we who? You and I. The born again believers. Yeah. We were yet sinners before this time. We were sinners. He came for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus came to set us free. So he became sin. Why? That we might be made who? The righteousness of God in him. That we might be made what? Righteous. Then we went to Isaiah 53, 6. Where the scripture says, and I won't turn there, it says, God laid on Jesus the iniquity, the iniquity or the sins of us all. Mm -hmm. He placed all our sins on Jesus. Then Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 says, our sins were nailed to the cross. But glory be to God. I say glory be to God. Yeah. Jesus has paid the price for us to walk in newness of life. Praise God. As our text scripture says, for the wages of sin is what? Death. But then came Jesus and he paid the price that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Glory to God. Why? He paid the price so that we can walk in what? Newness of life. We no longer have to live a life of sin. Let me say that again. We no longer have to live a life of sin. Yeah. Through Christ, we now have the power to present ourselves as instruments of righteousness. Right. Let me say that again. Through Christ, we now have the power and the anointing, amen, to present ourselves as what? Yes. Instruments of righteousness. Glory to God. Now turn with me to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, pick up there at verse 15. Then came Jesus. He came from heaven to earth to do what? To show us the way. He paid the price through his death, burial, and resurrection. The redemptive work of Jesus Christ. We were slaves to sin. Come on. Glory to God. But then came Jesus to set us free to become instruments of righteousness. He became sin that we might become what? Righteous. So that we could be called the righteousness of God in Christ. Romans chapter 5, verse 15 said, But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if any through the offense of one, watch this, for if through the offense of one, many became dead. Well, that's the first Adam. That's a whole nother teaching. I'm not going to dive into all that. Yet the first and the Bible said the last Adam, or you could say the first and the second Adam. The second Adam is Jesus. Jesus came to undo the mess that the first Adam got into. So we see here, through the offense of one, many became dead. That's through Adam. Remember Adam and Eve? We talked about that in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3, uh, how Adam, he committed high treason. He sold out on God. He partook of the forbidden tree. Amen. Praise God. And he became, he experienced spiritual death. Spiritual death is separation from God. But then came Jesus. Now notice when, when Adam sinned, and again, we quickly review it here. When he sinned in the garden, notice what came with it. Death. Come on. And that's why we're reading the scripture here. For through the offense, verse 15, of one, many became dead. That's us. But much more the grace of God. And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. That's us. Mm -hmm. Then came Jesus. He became sin that we might become what? The righteous. Okay? 
Verse 16, and not as it was by one that sinned, that's Adam, so is the guilt. For the judgment was by one, that's Adam, to condemnation, Adam. But the free gift of many offenses unto what? Justification, that's through Christ. Yeah. Verse 17, for if by one man's offense, death, reigned by one, much more they which receive an abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness, shall reign, shall rule and reign in life by who? By Jesus Christ, by one person, who? Jesus Christ. Yes. Come on now. Verse 18, therefore as by the offense of one, verse 18, therefore as by the offense of one, judgment came, that's Adam, unto what? Condemnation, that's Adam. Even so by the righteousness of one, Jesus, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. As through Adam, so by the obedience of one, Jesus, many shall be made what? Righteous. So now note here, by the righteousness of one, Christ came what? With Christ came what? The free gift of righteousness. With Christ came what? An abundance of grace, justification of life. And by the obedience of one, we can now rule and reign in life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's good right there, isn't it? So you see all the things that came with the first Adam, death, sickness, poverty, all that. But when Jesus came, oh, we received what? Abundance of grace, justification of life, righteousness, and we can rule and reign in life as kings. Amen. So, you know, we talked about all that sin comes short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3. Verse 23, and all that came through who? Through Adam. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Amen. And through that fall, we lost our relationship with God, right? Through Adam's disobedience. Mm -hmm. Adam committed high treason, sin entered into the world. We found out without Christ, we were just slaves to sin. Sin, what does it do? Well, it hinders our relationship with God. Sin hinders our intimacy with God. Sin makes cowards of men. It destroys our fellowship. And that's why we got to walk free from sin. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about the dangers of sin. We've already read uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It said, for the wages of sin is what? Death. Yeah. That's the paycheck. That is the result of sin. What comes along with sin? Condemnation, death. Come on, judgment. All these things comes along with it. <laughs> yeah, but notice there, let me show you how powerful sin is. I haven't showed you this one yet. Let me add this one scripture on that. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. That's why you got to stay away from sin as much as you can. Remember we talked about that? Amen. That when you fall into sin, come on now, Christians don't commit sin. Christians don't uh, uh, practice sin. We may commit sins. Come on. We miss the mark. Commit me, miss the mark, make a mistake. Christians make mistakes and sin. Come on. All right, but Christians are not supposed to be practicing sin, scheming it out, planning it out. Christians don't practice sins, they fall into sin. Mm -hmm. okay? God, sin is destructive. Sin is destructive. We saw what came along with the first Adam. Condemnation, judgment, death, all those bad things came. Mm -hmm. You even notice here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, I thought I would bring this out just to show you something. In verse 5, remember the children of Israel? Yeah. But with many of them, God was not what? Well, please. For they were overthrown where? In the wilderness. Remember wow. the children of Israel? Now these things were our example. These things were written for our example to the intent that we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Mm -hmm. Neither be idolaters, that's idolatry, uh, and, and idol is anything that you put before Christ, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat, drink, and rose up to play. Now watch verse 20, uh, uh, verse 8, I'm sorry. Watch verse 8 there. It said, neither let us commit fornication, sex outside of marriage, as some of them committed and fell in one day. 
Tell you the effects of sin, man. Sin is something else. In one day, 23,000 people fell. Wow. Ooh in one day, God was not pleased with them. Sexual immorality and all kinds of hell was going on. All types of sins were being committed. And in one day, 23,000 folk fell. Wow. <laughs> Just amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then we went on and talked about, again, Christians don't practice sinning. Uh, we went to 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. Amen. Praise God that Christians ought not... Uh, be sinning as a lifestyle. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. And we went to 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. We found out that when we do miss the mark, okay? When we do miss the mark, the Bible says in 1 John 2, 1, that we have an advocate, mm -hmm. okay? And that word advocate means one who pleads the case of another. In other words, we got a counselor. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus, amen? Yeah. Then in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible says that God is just able to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we dealt with that as well. So then we moved on to begin to talk about five keys to overcoming sin. Amen. Of course, uh, those subjects I just mentioned, we had a whole lot more to say about them. So you need to go back and hear that tape, amen, or that video. Five keys to overcoming sin. The number one we stated was what? Repent. Mm -hmm. Be quick to repent and quick to forgive. When you sin, hurry back to get back in fellowship with the Lord. That word repent means to make a 180 degree turn, to change one's mind, to surrender. Uh, you should feel deep regret. There should be sorrow. Make a complete change of direction. Repent. Five keys over is coming sin. You got to have a repentful heart. Yeah. Repent also means have a change of heart towards sin. An interchange of the heart that produces fruits of new behavior. Repent also means to admit that you're wrong, feel sorry for your sins, come on, and then forsake your sins. Mm -hmm. Bible also tells us that we need to confess our sins, and we learned that from uh, David. Remember over there in Psalms 32, verse 5, David said, I have acknowledged my sins. So uh, ag acknowledging your sin is also a part of repentance. Yeah. You got to admit, some folks just don't want to admit that they're wrong. Well, you're going to continue to sin. You must admit that you're wrong. Fess up. As the old saying, we've got to fess up. Amen. So number yeah. one was what? you got to repent. Amen. Yeah. Number two, we talked about last week, we must submit ourselves to God. Come on. James chapter four talked about humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. And first Peter talked about that we need to be clothed we need to clothe ourselves with humility, have a humble spirit. Then we went to Proverbs 22 and found out that, that the wages, that humility has a paycheck to it, yeah. that the wage of humility is riches and honor. Be a person of honor and integrity. We got to submit ourselves to God. One translation says this, the payoff of meekness and the fear of God is plenty, honor, and a satisfied life. The Amplified Bible put it this way. The reward of humility are riches, honor, and life. You know, and then we kind of touched the life of Saul. He just didn't have a repentful heart. But then you look at David, even though David missed it multiple times, mm -hmm. but he still became the man after God's very own heart. Yeah. He had a repentful heart. You read over there in the book of Psalms, especially when he was in the cave of Adullam. Listen, I mean, this man fell out in the sackcloth and ashes. I mean, David had a, a, a true worship heart. He had a heart for God. He was a man after God's very own heart. Yeah. David knew how to repent. He had a good heart, even though he missed the mark. Come on, nobody's perfect. David missed the mark. Many of us have missed the mark, mm -hmm. but that don't mean that you don't have a good heart. Even though David missed the mark, knows what God said. He's a man after my very own heart. Amen. So, so we looked at that as well. Amen. Praise God. We talked about submit means to humble yourself before God. Spiritual submission means to let go of the controls. Come on. And trust God totally. You got to turn your life over to Jesus Christ and he'll pour you out a blessing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So when we submit to God, we give our lives to his authority and control. 
when we submit our lives to God, we give our lives over to his authority and control. Yield yourselves to God as instruments of righteousness. So we talked about the second thing, amen, keys to overcoming sin. We must live a submitted life to God, amen. I said we must live a submitted life to God, amen. In fact, um, turn with me to uh, James chapter 4. Let's take a look at one scripture there, and then we got to move on. James chapter 4, verse 7. I wanted to bring this point out here. We talked about this last week. And you notice here, James said, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. <clears throat> the first things first. First things first. We're talking about keys to overcoming sin. How to walk in the freedom of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. How to live a free life from sin. Well, first of all, verse 7 says what? First of all, you got to do what? Submit yourself to God. Yeah. That's why we included this as being one of the keys. You got to come under the mission. Submission means to come under another man's mission. Come under his program. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Come on. Submit yourself to God first. Then you resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yeah. But we got to learn to submit to God first. Amen. Yeah. All right. Now, number three. Amen. We're talking about keys to overcoming sin. Turn with me to Psalms 119. Good. Psalms 119. Here's another one. Here's a big one here. We talk about how do we walk free from sin. And let me tell you this. Most people who have a sin problem or, or they got some type of habit in their life. Now, again, you got to have a repentful heart. And then you got to submit to God. It means to have a humble spirit, mm -hmm. have a teachable spirit. Mm -hmm. You got to be teachable. Now, you, you can't act like you ain't done nothing wrong. You just got to face the fact you missed it. I don't care if you were pastor, minister, member of a church. I don't care what role or title you have. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Okay? So you got to have a repentful heart. Then you got to submit your life to God. Submit your life to God. Then you'll be able to resist the attacks of the enemy. Yeah. But there won't be no resisting if there is no submission. Right? Uh -huh. You got to submit first, then you'll be able to resist. All right. Yeah. Now, here's the third thing. Oftentimes, when uh, in counseling, when I'm sitting down with people and counseling people, and they're coming and tell me some of the different habits they may have in their life, uh, which is simply those things that have caused them to miss the mark. Okay? It's called sin. Okay? So we dress it up a little bit. So it means to miss the mark. Mm -hmm. It means failure. You made a mistake. Well, some of the biggest reasons why people make mistakes or, or have failures is a lack of word. A lack of word. They just ain't got no word in them concerning that situation. Now, they may be strong in one area, but weak in another. Mm -hmm. You got to learn how to build yourself up in that area. How you do that? You build yourself up with the word of God. And you see, the word of God will answer, I don't care what you're going through in life. I don't care what you're going through in life. God's word has an answer for you. In the beginning, God. Yeah. The answer came before the problem. Mm -hmm. Come on. He said, I'm Alpha and Omega. Come on now. So everything begins with God. All right. So here's the third thing. You must hide God's word in your heart. You got to hide God's word in your heart. Psalms 119, and let's pick up at verse 9. We're talking about keys to overcoming sin. If you want to overcome pornography, drinking, smoking, smoking weed, I don't care what you do. I don't care what kind of habit it is that gets on your nerve and it seems to have your number. Let me tell you, you need to get in the Word of God. That's right, that's right. Nothing replaces the Word of God, man. You got to get some Word in you. Yeah. People come and say, well, Pastor, I got this problem and I got that problem. No, you know what your problem is? And I tell them and they just go scratching their head. I say, you got a problem. You got a lack of Word in that area in your life. Uh -huh. You need to dive into the Word of God concerning what issue that that might be. I don't care what it is. Some people got a problem with power. 
Some people got a problem. They talk too much. Mm -hmm. They gossip too much. So there's all kinds of situations, problems in life, right? Well, but you're going to have to tank yourself up with the word of God. Let me say it again. You're going to have to tank up in the word of God. You're going to have to build yourself up in the word of God. Psalms 119 verse 9. Wherewith shall a young man or a woman, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? Come on. By taking heed, here we go. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Yeah. Underline that. According to thy word. Yes, sir. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? That's good. That's good. Come on. Wherewith shall a young man get sin out of his life? Wherewith shall a young woman be able to deal with the attacks and temptations of the enemy? By heeding to, according to thy word. Verse 10, with my whole heart have I sought you, Lord. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Commandments mean word of God. Let me not wonder. When you start wandering away from the word of God, you start picking up habits. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all kind of habits or missing the mark. There's all kind of sins in this world. Yeah. Okay. When you start walking away from the word of God, that's why you got to fall in love with the word of God. Because yeah. see, God, that's where God's word is what? Quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. God's word is quick. And it's powerful. One translation said, God's word is alive. You got to get into the word of God. Yeah, I don't care what area it might be. Maybe your mouth is too big. Maybe you gossip too much. Maybe you're overeating. Hey, there's all kind of ways to miss the mark and make mistakes and have failures in your life. You're going to have to get into the word of God. Yeah. Verse 11 says this, thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might not what? Sin Come on. That I might not what? Sin, Sin against thee. Ah. You see that there? Thy word have I hid where? In my heart. Well, the Hebrew word for hid means to treasure. Jot this down. The Hebrew word for hid means to treasure, to cover oneself, to lay up or esteem or to store up. Again, the Hebrew word for hid there, hid there means to treasure, which means you got to treasure the word of God. You got to cover yourself, cover yourself in the word. You got to lay God's word up in your heart. You got to esteem God's word, or it means to store up. In fact, Psalms 19, guess what? It revolves around the value and importance of the word of God. What a big chapter, Psalms 119. I mean, several pages of scriptures there when you read the whole entire chapter there of Psalms 119. But, well, it revolves around what? The value and importance of the Word of God. I mean, you know that every believer faces seasons of fiery testing. I mean, all of us do. In fact, Jesus promised that trials are inevitable part of life. Again, Jesus promised that trials are an inevitable part of life. You go over there to Mark 10, 30. He said, now you know how the scripture talks about that you'll have mothers and fathers and houses and lands, yeah. all of that. It says all that good stuff. But then it ends with what? With persecution. So persecution is going to come your way. Well, how do you walk free from persecution? Or how do you walk free from sin? Well, you're going to have to get in the word of God. Yeah. You're going to have to value God's word. Come on. I mean, you know that Jesus has already promised that he has overcome the world. Turn with me to John's Gospel, chapter 16. Jesus has already promised, I have already overcome the world. He said, I've already paid the price for you. I paid the price for you to walk free from sin. Everything that you'll ever need, hear me, hear me. Everything that you'll ever need to walk free from sin resides within you. You got the greater one in you. Man, you got the Holy Spirit. You got the Word of God. The, the question is, what are you doing with the Holy Spirit? Yeah. What are you doing with Jesus? Is your life submitted to Christ? What are you doing with God's Word? Mm -hmm. Come on. 
Have you been storing up God's word? Do you esteem God's word? Let me tell you, there is no way in the world that you could. Well, I'm in the word. Well, wait a minute now. No, if you are esteeming the word of God and God's word has final authority in your life, there's no way that you're going to be walking in sin all over the place. There's no way you're going to have all these habits. No way. Because by you saying that, you're telling me that God's word is not quick and powerful. Bible says heaven and earth will pass away but my word shall remain forever yes. that's how powerful the word of God is heaven and earth will pass away but my word will remain forever amen yes. praise God now uh, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 2 Proverbs chapter 2 Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1 says, My son, if thou will receive what? My words. Yeah. Again, we're talking about keys to overcoming sin. Keys to overcoming sin. The third thing is what? You got to hide God's word. Uh, now, I'm not even going to ask the question. Maybe I should. How many of you have dealt with the sin that so easily besets you? Come on, everybody got a little something going on there. Uh, it might be your mouth. It might. It could be your weight. It could be you. Uh, you. You know. You longing after power. It could be. It could be all sorts of stuff. Let me tell you something here. You're gonna have to get that word in you. Yeah. You're gonna have to get that word in you. I don't care what you say. We all got to deal with something. If if you're gonna walk free from sin, you're gonna have to get this word in you. Yeah. He said, that word if I hid in my heart that I might not what? Sin. You got people got problems with sin. Why? They ain't got no word in them. Their word level too low. You need to build yourself up. I said, you got to build yourself up in that area. That's why having confessions are so very important. With your confessions, you're building yourself up. Come on now. All right. Come on. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. My son. If thou will receive my words, so you got to receive the word and hide my commandments with thee so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom. Mm -hmm. See, God's word to bring forth what? Wisdom on what? How to walk free from sin and apply your heart to understand. Yes, if thou criest after knowledge, talking about the word of God, when you see knowledge and all that, that means the word of God. If you cry after the word of God and lift up your voice for understanding, uh -huh. verse 4, and if you seek her, talking about the word of God, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasure, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous, for he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserve the way of his saints. Ooh, glory to God. I said glory to God. Mm -hmm. I tell you, God is, God is good, man. I said God is good. Now drop down into verse 13. Watch this. Who leave the path of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. See, mm -hmm. that's what will cause you to leave the path of righteousness. Come uh -huh. on, and you'll walk in the evil way, is when you walk away from the Word of God. Uh -huh. And that's why, you know, Ooh. you need to get that Word. And then there is that corporate anointing of when you come to church. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you, man, it's tough living life. I don't, I don't understand how people do life without Christ. They just going on about their life, just doing whatever they want to do. They ain't got no power to resist. They just falling into all kind of sin and doing all kind of crazy stuff, you know. That's because they ain't got no word in them. They walked away from the word of God. Wow. Let me read verse 1 again. My son, if thou will receive what? My words. You got to receive the word of God into your life. Yeah. You're not putting no word in you. That's why you cussing like a sailor. You don't have no word in That's why you're smoking reefer. You don't have no word in you. Why you're fornicating, pornography, all, 
all kinds of men. You got a big mouth. You, you're cheating and lying on folk. All, and, and these are Christians. They don't have no word level in them. They don't have no words to live by. <laughs> you got to have a word to live by, man. If you don't put no word in you, boy, you'll be bunk wild. You'll be shocked how much junk you'll get into. You got to keep your word level up. And the more you do for God, you really got to keep your word level up. Come, come on now. And then people try to, I can't understand why I'm doing this. I don't understand. Or, you know, you talk with people and they can't, well, I don't see nothing wrong with fornicating. Oh, my God. Pardon me? Have you been reading your Bible? No, I ain't been reading no Bible. Wow. It's just the way I am. You got to accept me or, hey, this is who I am. God accept me. No, God don't accept sin. Nope. Oh, no, no. That's why we're giving you all these scriptures for the last several weeks. Well, the wages of sin is what? Death. Yeah. But this thing ain't about death and destruction. It's all about what we can do for God. Yeah. I'm teaching you how to walk free from sin. Yeah. Well, Pastor, are you perfect? No, but I'm striving for perfection. Yes, and you got to stay in the Word. If you're going to walk free from sin, you got to stay in the Word of God, man. You got to stay in church. You got to watch Facebook Live. You got to get the Word in. Yeah. Yeah. That's so very important. I don't care if it's me, first lady, the Pope. I don't care who you talking about. Red and Bishop, this, that. I don't care. You find me a person that stay away from the Word of God. I'm going to show you a person that, that has a lot of failures in, in their life, got a lot of habits, walking in sin and all that. Why? That Word, if I hear it in my heart, then I might not sin against thee. You got to keep that Word. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. That, that's your problem, Pastor. I can't understand why I went out on my wife. I can't understand why I've been smoking weed and cussing and can on my wife, while my vocabulary. Well, have you been in the Word of God? Well, no, I don't read the Bible like that. Well, then there's your problem. I mean, you ain't got some, you don't need some big, giant counseling session. You just need to start reading the Word of God, man. You need to get into the Word of God. At least 15 minutes a day. I'm not telling you to do it for a whole hour. Start with just 15 minutes a day. Start with the book of Proverbs or start in the New Testament. But you just, just need to start in the book of Proverbs. Just read the book of Proverbs. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And certain things will begin to just fall off in your life. All of a sudden, man, you'll be built up so strong, you don't want to cuss anymore. Man, you'll be built up so strong, you know, that you don't want to be a whoremonger. You'll be built up so strong that, you know, and, you know, you can list more and more things, whatever you want to list. But you got to get some word in you, man. And that's why it's very important what church you go to. You got to go to a church where you're getting the word, man. Not games and activities and just a lot of music. Oh, no, it can't just, you can't live your life by just music. Man, you need some word. You need the whole counsel of God. Amen. Praise yes. God. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Some of y'all done got mad at me now. That's all right. It's true. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Well, Pastor, you don't understand. There's something in my life that I, I just don't understand. And I keep missing the mark. Well, we probably all have thought about that at one time or another. Why can't I get over this? Or why can't I get over that? Well, one thing you can rest assured of, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul writing to the church, verse 13. He said, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. In other words, Paul said, whatever you're going through, no big deal. It's common. There's nothing new under the sun. It's common. Don't go building it up like that. You just need to get in the word, brother, and then be a doer of the word. You need to get some word in you, man, and then become a doer of what you're reading. Amen. But God is what? He's faithful. Who will not suffer you to, watch this, God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above you are able. So whatever you're going through, you know what that scripture said? Whatever you're going through, you got the power to get through it. You have the anointing to get through it. Come on now. 
So don't glorify sin. Don't glorify the devil. Have you ever talked to folks say, oh, the devil showed his big. The devil done done this and the devil, the devil made me do it. The devil and the devil. Well, what is God doing for you? Good God. Who's bigger, the devil or God? But Paul said, what, whatever you're going through, it's common. No big deal. <coughs> Get into the word of God. Ain't no big deal. And God, he said, I'm faithful. He said, I will with the temptation make a way of escape. Yeah. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you're able, but will with the temptation do what? Make a way of escape that you may be what? Able to bear it. And, and some of you might say, well, I don't know if I'm able to bear it. Yeah, you are. Your problem is you ain't got no word in you. You need to get some ammunition. You need to get the word of God. Turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 4. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4. We're talking about the whole counsel of God. Church ain't just peaches and ice cream, guys. Man, we got to live a disciplined life. You got to live a disciplined life, man. You got to get into the word of God and walk in the freedom of the Lord. Amen? You notice there, how was Jesus able to resist the devil? Come on, how was he able? He was a natural man, yet without sin. Jesus, verse 1, Luke 4, verse 1, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, has the devil ever said unto you? Of course he has. If you be the Son of God, command this stone that it might be made bread. Verse 4, Jesus answered him and said, it is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every, Every word of God. Jesus said, this is how you live. Yeah. How you living? Wow. We ain't talking about no in living colors either. <laughs> I mean, y'all remember that. How you living? In living colors? No. <laughs> how you living? You're about to be living by the word of God, yeah. not by in living colors. Yeah, right. Oh, no. It should be by the word of God. Hey. How you living? By the word of God. Yeah. How you living? By the word of God. That's how you ought to be living, man. Yep. That's, what Jesus, that's how Jesus was able to resist the devil. Why? He spoke the word of God. Come on. I said he spoke the word of God. Then you drop down to verse 8. Then he spoke the word of God again and said, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is what? Written. How you going to quote what's written if you don't know what's written? Come on. Yeah. I shot the devil with my gospel gun. Come on. But you can't be making up uh, 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 sounds for a gun. Pow, pow. You ain't got no ammunition. Just yelling out, pow, pow. Do you got any bullets? Do you got any word in you? And that's why we have a problem with resisting. We ain't got no word in us, man. You tell the devil, stop, devil. Stop, leave me alone, devil. You're done. The devil going to smack you upside your head and you're going to do wrong. You got to have some ammunition on the inside of you. You got to have some word in you. This is how you live. I don't care if you're married, unmarried, single, don't matter. You got to get the word of God on the inside of you. If you're going to resist sin, if you're going to resist the tempter, temptations and persecution, if you're going to get by life and take, you better get some word in you. I'm just telling you the honest goodness truth. Without the word of God, we all will be a hot mess. You got to get some word in you, man. You got to get some word in you. Jesus said in the verse 8, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is what? Written, written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. God's word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Jesus said, for it is written. He, he, put the, he put that sword right in the stomach. It is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written. You got to deal with the devil with the word of God. You don't have a conversation with the devil. No, you ain't got time to be conversating with the devil. Hey, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing fine. Yeah, I feel like doing this. I feel like drinking this. I feel like doing that. And I feel like letting go. I feel like cussing. I feel like this. No, no. You can't talk to the devil. 
you got to quote the word of God, which is a sword of the spirit. It's a two-edged sword. It's cutting when it go in, and it's cutting when it come out. You got to hit the devil in the gut with the word of God. We talk about keys to overcoming sin. Keys to overcoming sin. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin. So when you miss the mark, just face it. Man, I need to double up on my word in that area. It might be with casting out imagination. I need to double up on the word of God in that area. It might be with your finances. You're not doing your finances right. And you know what? It ain't got to always be fornication and pornography and all that. It, it, it could be in the area of finances. Satan's got the victory over you in that area. You need to get into the word of God. Then become a doer of the word of God. Amen? Amen. I said amen. amen. So Jesus spoke the word of God uh, uh, against the attacks of the enemy. Now, let me narrow this message on down. Turn with me to Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. You got to speak the word. Remember that old song by the fathers of Christ. Speak the word. The word of God. Speak the word. The word of God. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get behind me. <laughs> Resist him, he'll flee from you. Resist still, he'll flee from you. The Bible said he'll flee from you. I mean, y'all remember that? All? Some of y'all ain't never heard of the followers of Christ. <laughs> but boy, they used to sing the word of God. Yeah, they did. Resist him, and he'll flee from you. But you got to speak the word. The word of God. I remember that. Speak the word. The word of God. And they sing that for a minute. Speak the word. The word of God. That's the key, man. You got to speak to speak to your body. Yeah. Speak the word of God to your body. Speak yeah. the word of God to your yeah. mind. Yeah. Speak the word of God over your children. Yeah. Speak the word of God over your money. Yeah. Speak the word of God over your household. Yeah. Speak the word of God over your church. Come on. Yeah. Speak the word of God over our nation. Big time. Well, we really need to speak the word of God over our nation. Oh. My God, there's so much going on. Yes, Note there in Psalms 1.1. 1, 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Some of you getting ungodly advice. Why are you doing that? Yeah. You can't live by ungodly advice. Huh? Well, you either believe the word of God or you don't. God's word must have final authority in your life. This is how we live our life is by the word of God. The word of God is God speaking to us. Yeah. Let me say it again. The word of God is God speaking directly to us. Yeah. So he said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law, or the word of God, his delight is in the law of the Lord. Uh -huh. And in his law, in the word of God, doth he do what? Meditate day and night. What shall he become like? Verse 3. He shall be like a tree. When I think tree, I think stability. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, <clears throat> and his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Ah. Why? Because his delight, Thank you. come on, is where? In the law of the Lord. How about Psalms 119? As we wind it down, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, Lord. You got to get some more word in this, guys. Come on. Psalms 119, verse 125. Let's see. Psalms 119, verse 25. That's it. Verse 25. Yeah, I like this. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Watch this. Quicken thou me. Yeah. Quicken me according to what? Thy word. See, the word of God will bring that quickening. It'll open up your eyes. Come on now. Come on. Jump over to verse uh, 105. Psalms 119. Stanza 105. Now let's back that thing up. Verse 103, how sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. 
through thy precepts or through the word of God, I get understanding. Therefore, watch this. Ooh, I like that. Verse 104 said, through the word of God, I get what? Understanding. Therefore, I what? Hate every false way. Or you could say, therefore, I hate sin. Ooh, now watch 105. 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Wow. I said, wow. wow. Turn with me to 2 Timothy yes, chapter 3. I'm almost done. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This is how you get, get yourself right. How shall I cleanse my way? You need to get in the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. This is how you cleanse your way. This is how you get things straight out in your life. You got to get into the word, man. That word is a lamp unto our feet, which means a lamp comes to show us the way, knowing which way to go. How I many of you need to know which way to go? How I many of you need to know what to do? Well, that word is a what? A lamp unto our feet and a light into our pathway. God's word will illuminate the way so you'll know exactly what to do and what not to do. You'll know exactly who to hook up with and who not to hook up with. Come on now. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, which means God breathed, and is what? Profitable. In other words, God's word brings profit. How many of y'all like profit? Man, I know you some of y'all done woke up now. Uh, you like profit. Well, God's word is profitable. For what? Reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. Then verse 17 will tell you why he gave us his word. Not just for reproof and correction, but so that the man or woman of God may be what? Perfect or mature. Thoroughly furnished unto all good work. And then one last scripture, John 15. John 15, verse 3. John 15, verse 3. Notice here what Jesus said. Jesus said, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Oh, wow. <laughs> now you're clean. How do you get cleaned up? How did God clean you up? By throwing sickness on you? No. By putting disease on you? No. By killing your kids? No. He said, now you are clean how? Through the word which I have spoken unto you. In other words, God's word will clean you up. <laughs> yeah, God's word will clean you up. How many of you need to be cleaned up? Look, all of us, starting with me, we all need to be cleaner. But there's only one way that that can happen, by standing in the word of God and becoming a doer of God's word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, Lord. Amen. Did y'all get something out of that word today? Yeah. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. You got to get in the word of God to walk in victory. Amen. Yeah. Perhaps there might be someone here that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And if that's you and you're not 100% sure that if something were to happen to you, you're not certain that you'll make heaven your own. Hey, I love to pray for you. You know, the Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in the heart that God has raised you from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I would love to uh, uh, say a prayer with you today, ma'am, sir, boy, or girl. And I'm going to invite everybody else to pray along with me as well. Everybody pray with me now. This, say, say this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today as humble as I know how, Lord, 
I've tried it my way. I've only messed it up further. Now, Lord, I come to you, Lord. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead on the third day, you said, Lord, that I'll be born again. So right now, Lord, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is right now my Lord, Savior, and Master. And I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead on the third day. I receive you now as my Lord, Savior, and Master. Lord, do something great with my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo! We're so excited for you. Oh, we're excited for you. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Now, we got a book here for you, and it's called Where Do I Go From Here? Your Next Steps After Making a Decision for Jesus Christ. This book is going to sort of uh, disciple you or mentor you or coach you. Now that you're a newborn again, babe in the Lord, you need to know what to do and how to do it. Uh, when I miss the mark, Pastor, what do I do? Well, see, this book is going to help you to understand the necessary steps that can cause you to continue to grow in the things of the Lord. Yeah. Now, we want to get this book into your hands. Now, the way that you get this book, we're going to ask that you go to our website at newbeginningsplural.clc.org. At New Beginnings Plural, CLC.org, and go to the Prayer Request tab. And when you get there, just place your name and address there, and we'll get this book out to you as soon as possible. Once again, we'd like to say congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Well, how many of you were blessed today with that message? Yes. Amen. Oh. We're talking about walking free from sin, yes. ways to walk yes. free from yes. sin. Yes. And today we talked about what? Hiding the word of God in our heart. Ooh, that's so very important. We got to get that word down on the inside of us. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's opportunity to prosper time. Glory. It's time to give. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory, Glory to God. God. You know, the word of God said it's more blessed to give than to receive. It says give and it shall be given unto us good measure. Press down, singing together and running over. Shall men give unto our bosom. Word of God goes on further to say that God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. Ah. The book of Malachi chapter 3 <clears throat> says, Bring ye all the tithes and offers into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Prove me here now with. Here with what? Your tithes and offers. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive it. How many of you got more room for God to bless you? Yeah. Of course we all do. Well, so very important that we bring our tithes and offerings unto the Lord. Amen. That we give from a willing heart in the name of Jesus. Now, there are three ways that we encourage you to give. Number one, through PayPal. You can go to New Beginnings, plural, clc.org. Again, through PayPal at New Beginnings, plural, at clc.org. Or you can go through Cash App, and that's at New Beginnings, plural, clc. Again, that's Cash App, New Beginnings, plural, CLC. Or you can just simply just mail it in, praise God. And that's to P.O. Box 320-658. Again, P.O. Box 320-658. Amen, praise God. And that's Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. Amen, praise God. Well, let's hold up our offering to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, and let us agree in faith. Heavenly Father, once again, we do count on the honor and the privilege to give this day. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, that you'll give back to us good measure, pressed down, second together, and running over, so men give back to our bosom. And Lord, we just thank you right now that as we give, it'll cause new beginnings to continue to enlarge its tents so that we can reach out to a lost and dying world with the glorious gospel. And Lord, we just thank you that we thank you for the benefits of a tither, that you'll rebuke the devourer for our sake. And Father, we thank you that you'll open up the windows of heaven, pour us out a blessing that we ain't got room enough to receive it. And Lord, we thank you that as we 
get blessed, then we'll become a blessing to other people. Yeah. Ministering spirits, go forth now. Cause our return to come unto us. For we believe that we receive a hundredfold return in this lifetime. Wealth and riches will be in our house. In Jesus' name, all that agree, shout it. Amen. amen and amen. Praise amen. God. Hallelujah. Well, it's been another glorious evening. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we're about to sign off in just a moment. But as a reminder, don't forget about our next in-person church service, which will be Sunday, October 24th. Sunday, October 24th at 12 o'clock noon. We'll again be at the Wahhabi Building. And don't forget about this upcoming Sunday is Communion Sunday. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. So, amen. Um, it's been a blessed evening, guys. Love you. Love you in Jesus' name. Y'all have a blessed day. See you Sunday at 10 o'clock.